Hi, I'm David Pike, the Connect Geek, and welcome to this, the third and final podcast in our series, in which we're taking a look at some of the latest tabling technologies being developed for the next generation of data centers. In this case, the Active Electrical Cables, or AECs. In the first two episodes, we talked about how data centers are driving the demands for high-speed connectors and cable which led us to look at the features of these new AECs and how they are providing new possibilities for data centers. And we also compared AECs with some of the, the passive products, the, the direct attached cable or DACs. And we discussed some of the reasons why customers might choose one technology over the other. In this episode, we want to expand a little bit more on some of the practical benefits for system architects and what using AECs will mean to them. And I'm joined again by Chris Kapazinski and Vivek Shah from Molex, who will help me navigate through this advanced technology. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thanks, David. We talked last time about some of the benefits that AECs are delivering to data centers. So if we look at the actual practical application, what changes are AECs making when it comes to the architecture of the data center? Yeah, David, this is Chris. I can jump in on that one. So in terms of some of the practical implementations or practical applications that are taking place within the data center, it really does come down to the ways in which we can most cost-effectively increase the overall capacity associated with those data centers. We did talk previously in terms of the increase in speeds leading to greater capacity and the demand by that. Again, what the data center architects are really kind of challenged with is, is whether or not those current tools in the toolbox are going to be sufficient. And I think that we find out more and more they're not. So with AECs, they're able to basically still cost effectively manage their need to increase their overall data center's capacity while still ensuring that they are hitting some of their target marks as it relates to reduction in overall energy consumption, helping to manage their thermals, as well as being able to once again, you know, basically tackle some of the maintenance challenges and routability associated with cabling these different types of racks to each other, as well as some of the servers uh, to the top of rack switches. And that, that brings us back to one of the, the key things that we talked about last time. We talked about reach and we talked about the fact that the AECs will, will go further. And that's going to be having a big impact, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, and the other thing that we talked about was the fact that AECs aren't a fix-it-all solution. There is still a place for the, should we say, the more traditional cabling, the DACs, the passive products. There is a place for them to exist side by side, isn't there? This is Vivek. I can answer that question. So absolutely, yes. The AEC has a certain application where when the reach is longer, the passive DAC is not going to be able to manage that. However, within the short distances, whether it's the one meter or even 1.5 meter, there is no need to use an AEC because it is costly. You're using extra components which are not required and it also consumes the additional power which the passive cables do not. So a combination of the DAC as well as AEC is the real key to solving some of these challenging problems we are seeing in the data center today. And so system architects are going to be able to find that magic point, that sweet spot where they've got a combination of non-active and active cabling that's going to give them the performance they need. Yes, that's correct. And you mentioned power. So that leads me on to my next question. AECs are active devices. And we've talked about the fact that we can use AECs where they're needed and maybe leave the DACs in place for applications where they're not. But will employing AECs within the data center mean that the managers are going to have to change their power supply architecture? Is this something they're going to have to think about? Uh, in truth, no. Um, and here's why. Many times these switches and the components within the data center are designed to be able to support a multitude of different I.O. cabling, whether that be the passive DACs or it could be higher powered optical modules. 
we spend quite a significant amount of time designing up these solutions and specifically the front I.O. to be able to handle cabling that may consume 20, 25, even 30 watts of power. Now, that's specifically more from an optical perspective, but I'm simply using that to highlight that the system is already designed to be able to accommodate that sort of per port power consumption. The beauty about AEC is that they do not consume that level of power. Depending upon the type of chips that are used within the cabling, you could see anywhere between 6 to 12 watts of power consumption, significantly less than that of an optical module. So yes, in truth, while they do consume, I am being active, more than a passive DAC cable does, they are still well below that of what an optical module may consume and therefore well within the design parameters and constraints of what the system has been designed to handle. That's going to be brilliant news for the managers of of these facilities because I take it that means that they can be very flexible in terms of swapping in and out the cabling they need almost day to day. I don't think day to day is quite what we're looking for, but it does mean that they can be very flexible and adaptable, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yes. And in terms of additional investment to employ this technology, is there anything else that they need to be doing? We've talked about power supplies, but are there other requirements for anything from from cable routing through to managing the actual products themselves? Are there going to be additional investments that these guys are going to have to put into using them? Honestly, David, I think no. And the part of that, in the sense, is these AECs are really kind of designed to be kind of plug and play, drop in, as you're suggesting, maybe not on a daily basis, but certainly the the concept of being able to reutilize much of the same cable raceways, cable techniques, et cetera, all that is still going to play out. In fact, from the naked eye, there might not be really any significant difference visually between an AEC versus a DAC cable, other than an AEC cable might actually be smaller in terms of its cable diameter, its cable bundle. Again, and we've touched upon that previously, with these being active cables, we can actually utilize less bulky twin acts to be able to go to the same length within the rack or even between racks. So if anything, it may actually become easier for implementers within a data center to incorporate AECs compared to the traditional DACs that they've been accustomed to. That's interesting because that answers my next question was going to be about whether employing this new technology is going to affect rack design. And and it seems that the simple answer is it probably won't. In fact, as you say, it's going to be easier almost to employ this technology than, than traditional types. So from that point of view, it's going to be easy to implement. Are there design changes that managers could make that would take better advantage of this? Or are we literally sticking with the architecture we're using at the moment? This is Vivek. Currently, the idea of using AEC is to not have the data centers change their architectures and continue using that. Because the alternative to not using an AEC would be that instead of a top of the rack switch, they could change the architecture to the middle of the rack, and now they have shorter cables to go from the middle of the rack to the servers on top and bottom with up to maybe a 1.5 meter cable reach. If you want to go from top all the way to the bottom, up to a three meter of reach, the passive copper cables was not going to be sufficient. And so AEC is kind of solving that problem that the data center architectures did not have to be changed or upgraded, and they can continue using their current architectures. Okay, so it is literally about making life easier to continually ramp up the performance of the data center as required, that managers could could employ almost on a stage-by-stage basis as demand increases. We've talked about the technology. Um, Do you have any examples of real-world applications where people have started to adopt this technology, and what kind of performance are they seeing? We are seeing early deployments of AEC in the data center. And the early response is very positive. We are seeing that the system architects are able to solve the challenging problems that they are seeing with respect to the reach, with respect to the cable management problem, or even using a smart AECs for 
redundancy of top of the rack switches by giving them the option of deploying the AEC in these architectures, we have definitely overcome a significant challenge that the system architects are facing. As we start going towards 112 gig, we will start seeing a lot more deployment of this type of AEC cables into the data center. So it's it's safe to say that we're we're going to be riding the crest of that wave as that demand for 112 gigabit PAM4 comes along. And as more people start to employ that kind of technology, then the demand for this sort of solution is going to skyrocket as they try and implement it. Yes, absolutely right. Okay. Well, this technology, I'm fascinated by this technology because it enables people to be able to deploy a solution using existing architecture without having to change everything, because that's must be one of the concerns of operators. They see a new piece of technology, they see increased demand, and, and one of the concerns will be that they have to completely revamp the system, completely redesign, and yet this solution is, let's not quite say plug and play, it's a little bit more involved than that, but it provides an easy, scalable version of the existing infrastructure that's simply going to start giving people the option to provide that additional performance as and when it comes along. And folks, that's probably all there is we need to talk about in terms of this type of technology. We've taken an in-depth look into what it's going to do. It's going to be future-proofing the data centers to be able to respond to that increase and ongoing rise in demand for high-speed internet services. All that remains for me to say is to thank our guests for sharing this knowledge with us. I hope you, the listeners, have found this as, as interesting as I have. This is part of the connectors world with which I simply wasn't familiar. And it's been fascinating to find out how our internet is going to be powered in the future. Chris, Vivek, thank you so much for guiding us through this topic. Thank you, David. I really appreciate the time. Thank you, David. I appreciate the time. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Until next time.